I'm Kane Vust and this is our weekly Q&A session. The first seven minutes are me rambling on about why you shouldn't be a pussy. The rest of it is questions and answers. If you want to see the time frames, check out our YouTube. Otherwise, I hope you enjoy it. This week, I guess I'm going to talk about not being a pussy. And the reason I'm going to talk about this is recently I was chatting with some people in WeChat and they were talking about like masturbating and looking at porn and objectifying women and stuff like that. And lots of guys out there who you would say are kind of blue pill guys are these guys that think the way they're perceived by others is more important than I guess the action they take and the results they get in terms of women, right? So in this discussion, I was saying that it's good for guys to like not watch porn and ideally not masturbate too much because that will drive you to go out and then want to meet girls. Otherwise, you just sit at home and you're super horny, right? So if you like go out and meet girls, you're meeting other people. And when you're meeting other people, you are generally going to make more useful connections in your life. And it could be you just meet more girls. But usually what happens is that you also meet people who could help you in terms of business or your job or whatever else. And some of these people having this conversation with me brought up this thing where they said, oh, well, couldn't, like, if you're going out and looking for sex, couldn't that make you start objectifying women sexually? And for me, I always, like, get really infuriated when people ask questions like this. You know, I like questions, but I mean, it's just crazy because my response was, well, if you like the girls that you're having sex with, then you're not objectifying them, right? Now, what it really comes down to is that there are a whole bunch of people out there who prioritize trying to be what society defines as a, a nice guy or a good guy above being a man and getting results. Because that's really what being a man's about, it's just getting results. And that results could be getting girls, right? It could be making money. It could be buying a house and providing for your family. It could be a whole bunch of things, but it all comes back down to just getting results. So anyway, the, this particular dude was saying this and all it really communicates is that he's more worried about breaking some sort of socially defined virtue rather than getting results. And I always find this really frustrating because it's one of the big things that stops guys from developing as guys, right? So if you like walk around thinking, oh, maybe I shouldn't like approach that girl because she might feel uncomfortable that I'm approaching her. It's like, well, if you're going to think that way, you probably shouldn't fucking leave the house because some people are going to be uncomfortable if you just look at them. <laughs> so it's a terribly limiting mindset to have and it, it really drives me up the wall. The, the major problem with it is that people are very sneaky and they use it to rationalize why they are not fucked up or why they are not weak. They use it as an excuse to say why they are okay or why what they're doing is right and what other people are doing is wrong. But what they're really doing is just defending the weaker part of themselves, the sensitive part of themselves that they don't want to expose. And that really sucks because that's the part that needs to fucking change if they want to see personal change. And for example, let's say you go to the club, right? And you're chatting up some girl. You look at the girl and you're like, yeah, I mean, she's like got a nice body, cute face, and you would bang her. That's your, your feeling at that, at that point. But then... As you speak to her for 10 or 20 minutes, you find out her personality is just okay. It's not bad, but it's not like what you're really, really looking for. Not the ideal girl you want to spend like all your time with, right? So what are you going to do? The virtuous kind of happy, happy, good boy thing to do would be you think, well, I'm not going to bang this girl because if I bang her, she will probably be upset that I don't want to keep seeing her because she doesn't have the personality that totally works for me, right? So a lot of guys then wouldn't bang the girl because they'd feel guilty about doing that or they'd feel bad that they are somehow leading the girl on. And that's just insane because one, 
they're being really, really self-centered and thinking or assuming that the girl is going to care that they're not going to see each other again. And two, they're trying to take the moral responsibility for things so then they can make a decision which makes them feel like they're in control. And what actually occurs is it just means they're not going outside their comfort zone. They're not taking a risk of getting rejected or anything else, but then they're trying to make themselves feel better about that and then rationalizing about why that was an okay decision to make. And that's just crappy. So in reality, if you see that girl and you're not that into her, but like you want to bang and you think she wants to bang because she's responding well, you should take her home and bang her. Doesn't mean you need to give her false expectations or lie to her or deceive her in any way. I don't think any of that's too great. But yeah, I mean, girls enjoy sex too, right? So if you all think about this for just a sec, you look at a guy and a girl and they're having sex. What can you hear? Generally, you hear the girl screaming out, like in pleasure, she's enjoying it. Why? Girls have a huge amount of nerves in their vagina. I think way more than we have on our genitals. So <laughs> in terms of pleasure, I mean, girls are getting a pretty good deal. Now, anyway, beyond the, just the sexual aspect of that, if you do meet this girl and you end up banging her, one of the important aspects of this is that you are going to learn something from it. And learning something from it is going to help you progress as a person. You're going to get experiences which help you develop your character, which help you develop your skills. And that is the really important part. So it's kind of impossible to go, okay, well, I am going to develop my person and my skills and my personality and all these things about myself, but I'm not going to affect anybody in any way when I'm doing so. And you know the old saying, you've got to break a few eggs to make an omelette. It's kind of true, right? I'm not saying you should go out and break eggs, eggs in this case being girls, but you have to understand that dating is a contact sport and it doesn't really matter what you do, people are going to be unhappy. So you could say, meet that girl in the club and you and her hit it off, but you don't like her that much and then you go and have sex with her and you go, oh, well, I don't want to break any eggs, so I am going to spend my time with her and devote myself to her even though I don't like her very much. And if you do that, then you're kind of limiting yourself to finding a girl you would really like. Plus, you are getting that girl to be with someone who doesn't really like her very much. And that, my friends, leads to you getting all resentful and then going, well, I don't fucking like this girl anymore after like six months or a year or two years. And then you blame her for that and then you want to leave anyway, which still results in her being hurt. Okay, so now we're going to get into questions and answers. So let's get into it. Like just a question. Say like you meet someone. Actually, I just did. <coughs> like last weekend, person was actually drunk when I chatted her up, though she didn't look it. So I thought, nah, maybe just disengage. Because if someone's drunk, like it kind of like warps their senses and stuff and I never use alcohol when picking up because it's to me like cheating at poker, you know. Okay. If I want to do, like if I want to do it, I want it to be because of my skills, my personality, maybe the odd bit of luck, but not because the person's inebriated and can't think straight. Like anyway. Uh, the thing is, like we met like at the bar and I decided, okay, I'm leaving. But she followed me outside. She was waiting for her friends who didn't pop up and in the end she was like shambling outside on the street, barely keeping her balance. So I thought, ah, crap, can't leave this person like to freeze her arse off. So in the end, I just like took her home and let her crash here. No other like thoughts intended. But then something interesting happened. Like she started sobering up and we started to talk. And basically the impression I've got was she, she did like me, but she wouldn't do any other moves or let it go further because of her duty, so to speak. Like, basically, she's married to a guy she doesn't know she loves, like, whether she loves or not. He gives her freedom and he lets her have all the money in the world, but, but beyond that, he's not that much of a catch, apparently. And, uh, yeah, she's basically like, why did we meet at this point in time? And, yeah, I guess my happiness has to be... Uh, 
like just that I can provide for my family. Now the thing is, what would you do if you met people like this who were into you but had some social or whatever duty kind of related thing that pulled them back? Would you still try to pull off something or not? I'm asking. Like, I mean, I didn't try, like, I mean, okay, I, I, like, I escalated a bit in this case. She shot me down, but it was natural, like, I didn't feel it, like any discomfort. And in the end, we agreed not to meet for discretion's sake, and, yeah, because she needs to keep her marriage, or her contract, as I call it, intact, to provide money for her family. Like, the thing is, what would you do in such a case, I'm asking, for, like, for future reference? So, this is really a, a personal preference oh it is actually if else. you look i like i even posted a field report on the uh, like uh, bootcamp alumni page okay. about this what was the field report called i'll, I'll check it out uh, give me a second I, like i'm just gonna access the home page now uh -huh. and then i'm gonna tell you like it was only for a few hours that i hung out with her but yeah, it was one of the more interesting and sad experiences, really, when I listened to her after she, like, after the alcohol started to go uh, out of her head. Ah, uh, yeah, against the wall. That would be the one. Ah, uh, okay, okay. I see it. Okay, so it's like this. Hmm. Firstly, I don't think banging drunk girls is that great. I'm not going to tell people don't do it, because I'm not trying yeah. to make people's decisions for them, but there are certain risks involved with it. For me, yeah. personally, I mean, I just don't like drunk girls because they're usually kind of messy and that's not as enjoyable. Although, that kind of drunk, sloppy sex can be pretty entertaining at some mm. points. Now, <clears throat> so that, that's like the first thing, right? The second thing is, this girl's married to someone that she is saying she doesn't really like, but she's married with him as because it's convenient and gives some value that makes it worthwhile. She can provide money for herself and her family by him. Yeah? Yeah, yeah. She was like concerned about being able to provide for her mother and she's from a family with nine siblings, her included. Damn. And her father's dead. Just to fill in the picture. Holy <coughs> shit. Okay, so <laughs> then the next thing is why is she out at the club uh, getting drunk and trying to, uh, not having yeah, her friends look after her well, and then so, going home with like well, well, random foreign dudes? So, like, sorry for interrupting, I'm just going to make this short so that you don't have to read through the entire text before um, it's like, okay. this is finished. Like, she was at the bar, at the hub, if you know it, like it's a friend, bar franchise here in Japan, and she was basically before, like, with her, her best friend, who is also married and has an affair with some Turkish dude. Now, her best friend took off with her lover in order to have fun or whatever, and this one was left back and felt like... Uh, sacrificing herself so her friend can have some private time with the guy but at the same time she's uh, jealous of her because that one has at least someone like she can have some happy moments with while she herself doesn't sure so the, the point and is the, the, oh yeah and they didn't come back also she said her husband wouldn't pick her up i don't know why but yeah yeah so that's not this is my really my point if she's out at a club getting drunk meeting people and then going home with them. I mean, she's doing that because she wants something. Now, she has some obligations and logically, yeah, she should go, okay, well, I'm married and I, I probably shouldn't mess that up because it does impact more than just myself. Like it impacts her family, it impacts the guy, etc., etc. But if you look at her behavior, I mean, her behavior is saying, I want to find someone else who can <coughs> give me some happiness because I'm not happy. And, I mean, she's hanging out with her friend who is having an affair. I would say that she's probably one or two short steps away from doing the same thing if she just has the right situation for it to happen in. So, in terms of the situation, uh, I think that she's out there to meet someone and have sex with them. Uh, in terms of girls and all their complications, I think that, Again, she doesn't want to feel responsible for it. She doesn't want to feel like she's doing the wrong thing, right? Mm. So yeah. if you wanted to make something happen, I mean, mm. you need to give her the opportunity to do something with you, which you did by taking her home, right? Secondly, yeah. you need to help her deal with her emotions and her logic in that situation. And yeah. there's a variety of ways to do this. But I mean, if you... 
if you said to her that it's okay, we're not going to do anything wrong, we'll just be friends, and friends look after each other, right? And she's like, oh, yeah. I guess they do. And you're like, yeah, well, I mean, if you're my friend, I want you to be happy, and I want to help you and do things to make you happy, and if I'm your friend, then you would want to do things to make me happy and stuff like that, right? She's like, yeah, I do. And you're like, okay, that's great. So we don't always have 100 years to make things happen. We've always only got a limited amount of time, and if we've met each other tonight... In this situation, I, mean, I know it's not ideal, but hey, why did we meet? There has to be a reason for it. And if, if you state things like this, it really plays into the way girls think in terms of fate and how they like to rationalize things because they're going to go, oh, well, yeah, we did meet and he didn't do that thing and he must really like me because of that. And there's a whole bunch of rationalizations that will occur because of the way you state this. Now, whenever you're banging a married chick, you are taking the risk of like messing up or helping her mess up her relationship and getting into some sort of trouble. So again, it's a personal call. I, I really don't think that you should not bang girls who are married or have boyfriends. I, I think you should definitely do it if it's not going to be messing up like a, a family and the girl yeah. is willing to take responsibility for it on some level. So, for example, if, if I met a girl and she was married and had kids and then she wanted to just bang like one time and that us banging wouldn't have any effect on her relationship and all of that, and I liked her and she liked me and us bang would make us both happy, then yeah, I, I'd do it because there's no long-term damage. Whereas I wouldn't be willing to have like a, I wouldn't be willing to have an affair and be with her long-term because I, I don't, yeah, I mean, basically it would impact kids and that's just shitty. <laughs> I don't want to be responsible for yeah. kids being messed up. That, that's a bit too much. But Anyway, the point being, there are a whole bunch of extra details which a lot of girls aren't going to share initially, and that's why I'm saying it's important to watch their behavior. If she's yeah. married and she's getting drunk in the club and going home with foreign dudes, she's not doing that because she's really happy in her marriage and, <laughs> and having a great time, right? She's doing yeah. that because on some level, she wants to meet other people. She wants to feel like she's attractive that she's beautiful, that guys like her. So, basically, don't get too caught up in the moral aspect of it so long as it's not impacting, like, a family. And then, secondly, as I said, there's extra details. So, once upon a time, I met this girl in a club, and I'm going to do the short version of this story. I met this girl in a club. We chatted for, like, two weeks on the phone, and then she wanted to come over. And I was like, meh. And I didn't know if she had a boyfriend or not at this point. I didn't know anything about that. I was like, meh, I don't want you to come over. And she's like, oh, I'll like, I'll bring you pizza. And I'm like, meh, I still don't want you to come over. <laughs> and I'm just being a dick because I thought it was funny, right? And I told her that I really like pizza and I really like drinking Baileys. You know that uh, milk, Irish milky cream drink thing? Yeah. Yeah, so I really like that. So she's like, oh, I'll bring you Baileys and pizza. And I'm like... Yeah, okay. <laughs> and then she comes over, and then we're in my house, and she's like playing with my dog. And after about half an hour of that, I pick her up and I carry her to the bed, and we start doing things. And we're kissing, and that's fine. And I, I'm touching her huge boobs, and that's fine. And I'm trying to get downstairs into the pants, into the, the panties, and then that's not so fine. And she's like, Oh, I don't think we should do this. And I'm like, Oh, okay, why not? And we keep talking about it. and I keep going again, and then eventually, I find out that she has a boyfriend, and then I find out that she's unhappy with this boyfriend, but they live together, and they've been together for a long time, and he's like met her family, but they don't have, they don't have kids or anything, right? Yeah. So why is she unhappy with him? Why is she then coming to meet me at like, I don't know, 11 o'clock at night and bringing me Baileys and pizza? 
Well, it's because, according to her, this dude is, like, beating her. So, she's not having a great time in that relationship, and it's not particularly healthy. And I said to her, well, look, it sounds like you're unhappy, and that's why you're here, because <laughs> you want to hang out with me, and I'm making you happy, and that you really need someone in your life that is not your boyfriend, that can talk to you about how you feel about stuff, that can understand you, that can support you or help you out in certain ways, and... I mean, I need someone like that too, and I like you, and you seem to like me. And yeah, anyway, so I gave her that, that talk, <laughs> and then after that, we started banging. So the next, I don't know, like four or five times I saw this girl, at some point, she would say she feels guilty about it, or that she doesn't think that she can have an affair, uh, so to speak. So when she would say this, I would talk to her about this and I would reframe things as it being not like we're having an affair but more just that we're friends and friends look after each other and help each other and initially she was okay with that but then she got all I guess like guilty or upset about it again and I got kind of irritated by it so I said to her well look mm. I mean, I'm talking to you about your stuff. I'm trying to give you advice and help you out because I'm like genuinely worried that you're in a, a bad situation and I think you're a good girl. I mean, I like you. I don't want this to happen to you. But I think you're being really inconsiderate because I'm, I'm spending my time and emotion to try and help you with your life. And what are you doing? You're like taking that value for me and not really giving me anything back. So that, that's really shitty. I mean, do you dislike me is this am i like a bad person to you or something or why are you doing that and then she went oh yeah i guess i am being a bit of a prick <laughs> and she stopped doing that and then from there on whenever we wanted to bang whenever we wanted to do anything she was just like really chill about it so it can take a bit of time but you can help girls kind of deal with the with rationalizing things with their emotions about certain situations. Yeah. Okay. So, like, I mean, I, we won't meet again. Like she said, yeah, no contact exchange and stuff. And yeah, in the morning, like we're just going to forget each other and pretend we never, like we never met. Yeah. And so stuff. My, my guess about that girl was that mm. basically, and this could be totally wrong, right? But likely yeah. she went home with you cause she wants you to bang her but she doesn't want to feel responsible with it. So if she's drunk, she can like have sex with you and she can feel better about herself because it's validating for her self-esteem. And then yeah. she can go, oh, I was drunk and I, I didn't mean to do it. So I'm not a bad person for like cheating on my husband. It's not my fault. It's that like foreign guy because like mm. he, he had sex with me. I didn't have sex with him. I was just there. <laughs> and then mm. she can like go home and feel okay about it, but then still okay. get the goodness. Well, well, that's like an interesting perspective because I thought, okay, she's drunk. Like, I could be okay if she's just tipsy, but she was really drunk. Like, she was so drunk that at the bar she, like, introduced herself a few times to me because she forgot a few minutes later that she had done it before. That kind of thing. Ah, oh, okay. That's why I thought, okay, I'm just going to let her crash at my place because I was feeling sorry for her and stuff. And then, like, without doing anything, I only escalated later because she had become more sober and she was talking properly and remembering what she was saying and knowing where she was and all that kind of stuff, you know. Okay. And, like, we did make out. Like, she also rubbed against me and stuff. She stopped escalations and though we kissed a lot and I could see, like, yeah, she would want me, like, like that's why she said, like, why did we meet at this point in time and stuff? Maybe we'll meet back like in the next life and stuff. And she just kept telling me, find yourself a good girl and be happy. Yeah, so... Because I, so, have, to, because I have to content myself with this. So that's the thing. Her saying, oh, why did we meet at this point? Maybe we'll meet again in another life. I mean, that's her blatantly saying, please help me rationalize this situation so I can like have some enjoyment and pleasure. I mean, that, that's mm -hmm. literally in girl talk. That's what that means. So okay. in that situation, she's giving you a green light to bang her. Uh, as for her being really drunk, I mean, I personally, I wouldn't take a girl like that home just because of the risks involved, both yeah. for her and me. <coughs> and even if like we didn't bang, but then her partner found out she was super drunk and she like stayed at my place. Yeah, then that could get her in trouble anyway. Beyond that, girls that are that drunk, what, what's the benefit in it for me? 
you know, I don't want to have to take care of her and yeah. I don't want to have any problems for her or for me. So the ideal situation, and this is a bit, if you're not going to bang the girl, but you still want to be a good dude and like help her out, the ideal situation is that you try and get her to call her boyfriend or husband, whichever it is, and you say, hey man, your girl is really drunk at this bar and you need to come and pick her up now. Mm, well, what I tried to do was like, okay, she said she had to go home by train. It was like past 11, the hub closes at 1, so she can't stay there like until the morning, obviously. So I was like, dude, it's getting late. You might want to catch that last train. She didn't want to. And she was waiting for her friends, or so she said, but they wouldn't come. And when I asked her about her hobby, she was like, yeah, he won't pick me up. I didn't, like, ask more about that because I didn't want to poke her on in a hornet's nest. Sure, sure. But, but yeah, she said, yeah, you wouldn't pick me up. And about her saying that, why did, like, did we meet at this point in time and using, like, like as a green light, that's a good point because once again, I forgot to, like, I, like, I forgot the fact that it's girls talk and that it, and that girls talk is not guys talk because we talk in facts while girls, well, you have to decrypt a bit what they're saying. Basically. Still, she did resist later, like, the escalation stuff. So, though, if I would have gotten it a bit earlier on, or, or maybe, no, like, verbally better and rationalized the thing, then, yeah, it could have worked. Yeah, I mean, she's asking for you to help her rationalize it. So, if it hasn't yeah. been <coughs> dealt with enough, then, yeah, she's still going to be like, oh, I don't think we should do it. Yeah. Then I guess, yeah, I hit the snag while doing that. So, yeah, I did. Yeah, because I mean, I didn't see it. Like, seriously, I didn't see it for, like, for, like, for what it was, because it's the first time, like, this kind of thing happened. I, I, maybe I wouldn't have even chatted her up if I would have known how wasted she was. It's just that she didn't look that wasted from just from looking at her. Okay. So, yeah. Well, so that's why. Well, one of the things. Later, when I broke off the interaction, she actually followed me out of the building. <laughs> Holy fuck. Can't be much more of a green light than that. <laughs> yeah. So what, one other thing I'll throw out there. If you're in a situation where a girl, or you, you want to bang some girl, and she isn't letting that happen, and you're expressing that you like her and stuff like that, especially if it's like a, this sort of situation, one of the things that works well is if you flip it around from being you like her and you're interested in her to getting her to show some sort of care for you. So basically, if you show that you're almost the victim or that you uh, feel bad because you feel lonely or sad or whatever and you want her to like you, that can, uh, that can provoke or evoke her sense of nurturing. So if you said to her, yeah, I really understand what you mean, being married like that sucks, you must be really lonely, I feel really lonely too and I was really happy to meet you because you seem like you really listen to what I say and it's really hard living in a foreign country where I don't like have my family here and stuff like that and I, I understand what you mean and I really wish that I had like someone to be close to. A lot of mm. girls at that point are going to go, oh, he, it's so sad for him and then they're going to bang you to try and make you feel better. Mm. Oh, good to know. Thanks. Yeah. Uh, can, I have a, can I ask a question? Sure. Yeah. <clears throat> okay. Uh, so, this is kind of related to what he just asked. I <clears throat> and a lot of the girls are chasing up boyfriends. And so this is a very, very common thing. It's like how to work with their frames and like um, kind of flip it around and stuff. And so basically one situation that I'm in right now is I direct opened a MILF who has a child, but she hasn't told me explicitly that she's married. I, I think she's married from her WeChat moments, but she hasn't told me that explicitly. She's only told me that she has a child. She said, like, I miss my child. So I direct opened her, like, she knows I'm attracted to her, and she said, why don't you, why don't we do a language exchange? We like she basically put that frame in the situation and I said, okay. And I agreed to meet her and her female friend in somewhere tomorrow. So that's in that situation, 
what are the frame games like being played there and how do I establish enough value within that frame or use and then use that frame like to my advantage so her uh, where are you going to meet her firstly like a coffee coffee place okay and has she said her friends coming for a short while or her friends can like stay there the whole time or uh, she the... just said she lives, in, she lives in a different part of town than me and she just said oh I'll be in town to see my friend why don't we go to this coffee shop and then you can talk about uh, culture and, and whatever she said she said some bullshit reasons okay so usually this situation is just that she's bringing her friend so she can't get banged super easily and once her friend is there for a while if the friend leaves and leaves you two alone it usually means you've been given a green light and she wants to get in on the action with you. Now, if the friend stays for a long time, that, that's kind of a pain and you should just focus on setting things up for you and her to meet up and then make things happen uh, next time. Now, what sort of frames do you have to deal with? What should you do in this exact situation to make it work? Well, the friend coming along, there's one good aspect of that. The MILF wants you to like her, right? Right. So when the friend's there, you should be a bit more flirty with the friend, but still show a fair amount of interest in the MILF. And that will make the MILF go, well, he likes me because he's complimenting me and all of that. But then he's being flirty with my friend. So what happens is logically she'll go, oh, okay, this guy likes me and he's charming and funny. But then emotionally she'll start to feel some level of jealousy or more interest attraction in you because you're getting pre-selection by getting good reactions from her friend. Mm. Okay. Okay. I just don't know. Yeah, I understand <coughs> what you said. Um, do you think I should sexualize? Yeah, lightly sexualize. So make like lightly sexual sexual. jokes. Right. So, see how she reacts. Yeah, like I always like to ask uh, a girl, if there's two girls, I'll ask the girl I'm not interested in, what secrets does she have about the one that I am interested in, right? Uh -huh. So, I would say, what secrets does she have? And then she, her friend says, whatever. She says, oh, she's got lots, or she has none, or whatever she says. I go, ooh, okay, I get it. I know what sort of secret that is. And it's the implication of yeah. something sexual rather than directly saying it and that's I think a good thing to do because if you're being overtly sexual with their friends around it can make them look kind of slutty or bad in some right. way right okay okay cool so then from there on it's just basically establishing attraction I mean not establishing but keeping attraction like, and sexualization and then logistically moving into a one-on-one -on -one scenario yeah so you've yeah. got the two girls in the coffee place you've like chucked some coffee down their yaps or they've bought coffee for you whatever that, that part doesn't matter too much yeah and then you just want to see is the friend gonna bail and leave you two alone so you can progress things or is the friend gonna stick around forever if the friend's gonna stick around to get forever then you should just focus on setting up the time bridge so you can like get on a one-on-one -on -one thing next time yeah, yeah. Okay. and if okay, she doesn't cool. then just progress um, when, when you're talking to a MILF and they don't bring up their family, like they don't bring up their husband, they don't bring up their kids and they have an opportunity to, and they don't, does that necessarily, what does that mean in your eyes? It usually means that they don't want to limit how they can interact with you. So, it's kind of like if, if you meet a really hot girl, primarily you're, you're interested in her looks, and if she's down to bang you, you really don't want to know about her having a boyfriend or, or whatever it is. You don't want anything to come up that could be an obstacle mm -hmm. between you and her banging and getting together. So the same thing is kind of true in reverse. I mean, if this girl is trying to meet right. you and spend time with you, she's interested in banging you. But if she brings up her kids and that she's married or all this sort of stuff, that just complicates things and it could make her feel like a bad person for doing things. Right. 
Whereas if right. you don't know about it, she can kind of pretend that it doesn't exist and then she can just do what she wants anyway. And then the other, and then one last, I guess, one last question. And the other situation is there's a girl I'm, I'm really, really into and she, uh, I directly opened her also. I just told her she was cute, uh, this and that. I, I basically I charmed Chomed her off her feet, and she gave me her WeChat. And then we uh, we've talked on WeChat for a while. Like we actually did voice talk for an hour and another hour of another day of like texting. And I established all this value. Like I'm just establishing value like out the wazoo. Like she's just basically swooning. And then she just I finally asked her out again, and she said, "Oh, I have a boyfriend. And he's controlling me." Like <laughs> Guanwu. Yeah. I was like, ah, oh, right, and she, and I just kind of swept that under the rug and established more value. And at this point, um, I, I mean, I'm trying not to make this question too simplistic. I actually want to learn like some more concepts because I think all of us run into similar situations like this. So I just <clears throat> want to, what I want to ask is, if she's, if a girl is in a situation like lockdown for however, but she's giving you tons of opportunity to show value and she's testing you. Now, does that mean that when you pass these tests, she's going to be looking at you at a boyfriend frame? Like basically you're going to be replacing her old boyfriend because you're passing all these tests. So that, that's a maybe. I mean, okay. some girls are going to be willing to trade up like that. And I can't remember the official name for that. But a lot of girls basically, it's called hypergamy, I think. A lot of girls, big girls are basically programmed to trade up. That that's just how they're built, right? So uh -huh. then you've got, I guess, the logical part of that situation. And some girls are going to not want to trade up, but they're willing to give you like a different position in their life. So they might be keeping you around so they can like, have fun banging you and all this other stuff while their boyfriend or husband or whatever fulfills the needs of providing money and a family and things like that. So it really just depends. Okay. So at this point, at this point, like you, I remember I asked you this question and you said, or someone said that I think it was you that you need to get her into a situation that it's like friends, just get her out somehow. Obviously she can't bring herself to go out with me alone. So get her in a, in a social situation, and then what would you suggest? Where you should you suggest I take it in that social situation, like logistically and emotionally, sexually? Okay, so how should you deal with a girl who has a boyfriend but is being all keen on you? All right. Firstly, you don't, I guess, know too much about what her relationship is with the boyfriend, how it's all going, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. So there's like a bunch of general guidelines I can throw at you. And the first one is that you don't want to put her in any position where you feel like she feels like you're judging her in any way. You want to do the opposite where you imply that you don't judge people about this sort of stuff. Because a lot of girls, even if they like you or whatever, they still don't want to feel like they're being judged as bad people in some way. Okay. Secondly, if she says the boyfriend guans her a lot, <laughs> that doesn't necessarily always mean it's a bad thing for some girls. A lot of Chinese girls enjoy their partner being jealous or their partner guaning them a lot because it makes them feel like they care. Now, the important thing is, one, do you have attention? Two, is the girl willing to meet you? If you can, you've got attention because she's hitting you up a lot and she's like calling you and stuff like that, right? So two, is she willing to meet you? Now that really comes down to you asking her and what's the scenario? And that's really, uh, depends on the girl. So maybe this girl would be down to meet you in a coffee shop because that's okay because you can be friends or whatever, but she's not down to meet you in a bar. So I would say based when you're talking to her and having conversations with her about her likes and dislikes and what is she doing recently and what are you doing, you should be finding out what are the things that are the most conducive to you and her meeting sure. 
and then suggesting some of those. Now, in terms of being sexual and stuff like that, I think you should always be doing that, but do it in a way where you're testing the girl's reaction. So basically, I wouldn't say directly, hey, I want to fuck you, let's meet. <laughs> yeah. I would like make sexual jokes and see how she responds. If she responds in a sexual manner, then she's giving you a green light in that regard. If she shuts it down and changes the topic, then she's probably not too keen on talking about that at that stage. So basically how I interpret that answer is the logistical part. Since I'm already far along, I'm, I'm establishing lots of value and we're connecting, I think, emotionally, then at this point, the logistical roadmap to my house, my bed, my English bed, right, is, is going to be... I'm going to have to work through with her frames, like a, a key sliding into a keyhole, like whatever frames she allows me to work with. Well, she's that's the thing. She's guilty about her situation. That's the thing. You, you just need to bump into whatever the problem is and then deal with it rather than trying to predict all of the problems. Sure, sure. And there's like some general issues that come up, like as before... Uh, Theo was talking about one where the girl's going to feel guilty about being a bad girl or about like cheating on their partner. And there's like some stuff you can do. And as I suggested, you, you state, oh, I think people should be happy and they should find happiness however they find it. I don't think everyone's perfect for each other. So sometimes cheating isn't cheating, right? There's a whole bunch of ways you can rationalize it, but sure. it's hard to predict every single problem. So I would say if you've got attention, try for a meet. If you can get a meet, Again, keep going until you hit some sort of barrier that you then have to deal with. Okay. Okay, because, I, yeah, I see what you're saying. I mean, it's more like an art, and that's like the art of seduction. I mean, there's an art involved. It depends on well, the it's, factors. But yeah, it's just there's so many factors. Yeah. You can't always deal yeah. with all of them. And sure, sure. sometimes you can be really, I don't know, straightforward about it. So... One of the things Red Paul Q did before where he had some girl who was saying, oh, I have a boyfriend, oh, and all these things. He said to her, look, I'm better than your boyfriend. Just dump him. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm pretty sure the girl actually did. He, he still banged that girl. Uh, yeah, I don't think that's going to work a lot of the time, though, simply because a lot of girls are going to stay with their boyfriend because it's not just about them meeting this guy they like. It's their parents have introduced them to that guy or they've been with him for a few years and they think, oh, well, I can have fun with you temporarily, but I'm going to like marry him and we'll have kids and have a long-term thing. So, yeah, I mean, some girls, they could, they could be like, they have a boyfriend, but their boyfriend cheated on them, so they want to get revenge and they're out to find some dude to bang. And you just like, right place, right time, right, and they'll right. bang you. Yeah, there's just so many, yeah, there's so many factors, but um, uh, yeah, okay, well, thanks, thanks a lot for your answer, appreciate it. No problems. So, whoever has a question next, I mean, feel free to jump in. I think if we're going to do it in terms of who's been here longest, Alan, you have been on and haven't asked a question yet. Do you have any questions? Any silence will be taken as a no. <laughs> <laughs> okay, great. So, who else wants to jump in with a question? Uh, Joshy, feel free. Yeah, I'll jump in. This is going to be good. Um, no, it's, it's it's a pretty boring question actually. Um, so I've been on a I've been on I've been on a couple of dates where I literally I, I find myself I I think of myself as quite a funny guy, and I'm on these dates, and I'm I just find the girl really really boring right like there's just very little chemistry xyz and yeah obviously i'm not gonna i don't want to go and marry the girl but i find it really hard to escalate or kind of like power through when there isn't any chemistry like uh -huh. i mean the conversation's going i mean i feel like i'm saying the right things it's just like there's I don't really know what what I could be doing or what I'm doing wrong, basically, if that makes sense. So where is it breaking down with those girls? I mean, it's just not, it's just never really taking off. I just find, like, basically it happens with Chinese girls quite a lot. It's just that there's no, there's like no banter. There's no, 
it's just very boring. It's like, it's just a lot of like questions and answers. And yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll drop in some jokes and X, Y, and Z. And, you know, I try and hit on a topic that she's interested in, but it's just, it's just generally happens with girls who don't have very much personality. Yeah. I yeah, don't yeah. mind that if I can get the lay, but I don't want to waste my time going through this if it's like, if I just can't escalate it. So I feel, I feel like, yeah, I don't know. I feel kind of frustrated that I'm either doing something wrong or, yeah, I need to be guided in a certain way or I, I don't really know. I'm not sure if anyone had experience with a similar thing. Oh, I think almost everyone's experienced this at some point. So, all right, that's a good question. Here we go. Your question is, how do I bang boring girls? And yeah, so. <laughs> the answer is, what does the girl need? So the girl's on a date with you because she's interested in you on some level. Now, your interest levels with her may not be super high, but you still want to have some sort of physical thing going with her. Then you just need to progress towards the bang. Now, if she's looking for a boyfriend who's going to like stick around and she's got a hard limit on that, you're probably not going to be able to bang that girl because she's going to like slow things down and going to try and push you to do lots more stuff you're going to be unwilling to do. But if the girl's interested in you enough and you, she doesn't have like a really strong rule about the boyfriend thing, then all you need to do is keep going through the steps. So this is why like regularly approaching girls in daytime, daytime, daytime and nighttime and doing it in a structured way helps a lot. And just as an example, let's say your structure is meet girl, have fun with girl to get her attracted, have conversation where we get to know each other. What does she do? What do I do? What does she like? What do I like? Compliment her and stuff. Tell her what I like about her. The next step is develop comfort between each other. So familiarity, trust, uh, sh reveal things about each other that make each other feel closer. For example, you tell her a story that when you were a kid, you got bit by a dog and you, you were scared or something that would be a personal thing you wouldn't normally share with people. And then the step after that is go to some place where you can bang and try to bang her. Now, there's a lot more detail in, in that structure, but as a nuts and bolts thing, that's about it. So you're on this date with this boring girl and you've already had the attraction thing going the first time you met her and she's met up with you on a date and you usually go for drinks, right? Um, yes, I think this specific girl, I'm just trying to think. So I took her to this kind of like really cool like Christmas fair in London where it was like kind of drinky, like there were drinks, there were like rides. So I thought it was a pretty good date and it was, it was an okay time. Okay. Uh, like, yeah, that was just it. Was, it was just quite boring. Like it, I was just going through the motions basically, and there was no chemistry. Yeah. So I mean, as for how to make it happen, you need to focus what you're doing step by step and keep pushing to the next step. So the next step, if you've had yeah. fun and she's letting you touch her and you're talking a lot and you've spent a few hours together, the next step is you trying to bring her home for some reason. It's like let's go and watch my cat do backflips or let's go and drink this tea or wh whatever it is you've got at your house that is like a reasonable excuse. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So to push her to come home with you and then when you're at home, you try and bang her. Now when you try and bang her, there'll be a bunch of objections that'll come up potentially and you have to deal with those. So dealing with those is like one of the, the bigger problems. So firstly, how you deal with those usually is something you learn when you start being someone's wingman a lot and you have to like wing on girls you're not that into. So I've had to do this a lot because if I'm teaching guys and then let's say there's two girls and one girl's hot and one girl's not, and of course the student gets to talk to the hot girl, well I distract the girl I'm not interested in. And spending time talking to and being engaging with girls you're not interested in is somewhat of an art form. So the more you do it, the easier it gets. And when you're saying you don't have chemistry, really what I think that means is that you can't naturally just be yourself with the girl and say and do things and everything will work out. Because when you have chemistry, you don't really need to think, you just feel engaged yeah, with yeah. the person, etc. That, that's, that's exactly it, basically. Like, I remember those, we were at... We were at the bar at one point, and like this other, I started talking to this other girl, uh, just like friendly conversation. But like, it was just so much more interesting than <laughs> the girl I was with. 
that makes sense? Yeah, it does, it does. Like, we were just instantly, like, joking, laughing, X, Y, Z, and it was like, and then I just went back to this boring conversation with this girl, and it was like, ah. Oh. And yeah. I kind of, I feel like it's definitely some sort of barrier that I need to push through, or, I don't know, I just really can't put my finger on it. Well, that's the thing. Did you try to bang the girl that you're not interested in? No, because I just felt like it just, it was so, Okay. there was just literally nothing there that, I mean, yeah, I didn't. That's, that's a good point. So here, here's the thing. Most guys are used to looking for good signals from girls that then tell them it's okay to continue. And what you've really yeah. said is that when you have chemistry with a girl, the girl gives you a whole bunch of signals that make you feel like it's okay for you to progress things. Yeah, and exactly. What I'm saying is that if you're like going out and you're helping your friend by winging and you're having to talk to a whole bunch of girls you don't really like, sometimes you're still going to have to progress things, but you're not getting much of those signals because you don't like the girl that much, right? So yeah. it's something that you can get better at by doing <laughs> a lot of. The question is though, is it something you want to be better at? And uh, it really depends. I mean, for me, I have to be good at it because I sometimes have to interact with people I'm not interested in to help out people for my work, right? But for you in that situation... I definitely, think it's, I definitely think it's a good skill to have, not only just generally, not even just not even in pickup. Like, it's a good life skill to have. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think the girl was like uninterested in me. She like messaged me a day or two later and was like, oh, I'm bored, like, 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 let's meet up. But I don't think... Yeah, I, I just don't, don't know. Okay, okay. Weird. Here's I, feel, the thing. I just felt like this is going so friend zone because it's so sterile and boring. Yeah, and that's just because you're used to doing things uh, based on how you feel rather than like, I guess, rationally or ruthlessly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> uh, are you still in the same city as that girl? Yeah, yeah, I think so. Okay, so... If you wanted to do this for science, then you could definitely just hit that girl up and say, oh, I'm really sad today and we should meet and do something. And then she'll probably agree. And then when you meet up, do the same things you normally do where you're like making jokes and having a good time and just push things all the way back to getting her home and try and bang her. And be aware that you're not going to have the normal signals you need that make you feel comfortable doing it. So you might feel it's like weird or strange at some points. But just keep in mind that you, you need to actively push yourself through this if you want to get that result and then give it a go because you're still in the same city as that girl right yeah to be honest you're right i didn't really give it a, a proper go because i didn't get the signals basically at the end of the day yeah this is pretty typical it's how most people yeah. are yeah all right well thanks thanks for the words of wisdom much appreciated yeah well, one other thing i'll throw in here and i've found this to be quite common and it's really kind of hilarious when you're with those sort of girls, you're generally not going to be needy at all because you're not really that into them. And a lot of the time, that can make them more into you because you're showing less neediness, less interest. Yeah. So... But like it's, it's a balance because I wouldn't be pursuing them if they weren't really hot. So like, yeah, they're, I'm not really attracted to their personality, but... I'm kind of powering through because of their looks rather than because I like them because of there's, there's kind of like a trade-off. You know sure, I mean? sure. I get what you mean. Like, yeah, if, if it was an average girl and we didn't have much chemistry, I wouldn't meet up with her again. But if it's a hot girl, no chemistry, yeah, I'm going to try and power through. And then, yeah, it's, 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 a, it's a weird kind of dynamic, to be honest. Yeah, so, I mean, the easiest fix is just don't go after girls that you don't have chemistry with. But... I understand that it's not always that easy to find lots of really hot girls you have lots of chemistry with, right? So yeah, with, exactly. with that girl, I mean, seriously, for science, like meet up with her again and see how things go. If you get caught up where she becomes insecure because on some level she senses that you maybe don't like her that much, then you should actually do something I mentioned before, which is where you put out there, oh, like, I really liked you and I, I thought you really understood me. And it's really rare for people to understand me and like me because most people just think I'm funny or interesting, but I think don't like me for who I really am. And what you're doing in that scenario is you're taking the typical, I'm a hot girl who everyone wants to bang for my looks. You're taking that frame and you're just playing it back against her. 
So okay. that's a really good yeah. thing to do because girls are used to guys trying to bang them just for their looks. Whereas if you're going, oh, well, I, I thought you really understood me and I really liked you because it, most people just seem to think I'm funny and seem to like me for that. What you're really doing is showing a vulnerability about yourself and then saying that there is a place in your heart or in your life that she can fill, a dark space in your soul that she can make warm <laughs> and light. Right? Okay, I'll, I'll, um, I'm not, yeah, it's not dead, but uh, I will let you know how it goes. Okay, that would be fantastic. But thanks for the advice in any case. Appreciate it. No problems. I believe Thomas John is next. Yeah, I'm here. Can you hear me? Yeah. Okay, so um, you said something... Earlier, I'm not sure. Like, uh, I wrote it down really quickly, but I may have lost the, your uh, original meaning. You said a freeze out is about finding out whether or not a girl has insecurities. Uh, not exactly. I said a freeze out will generally work well with girls who have insecurities, ah. and it will make them more insecure. Because a freeze out is just it, the carrot and the stick, right? You freeze a girl out, you're really just using a stick to whack her in the head and say, hey, uh, if you don't do what I want, I'm going to hurt you. Okay. All right. I've tried freeze outs before and they didn't really work for me, but um, there was one girl that it did work out for and I ended up closing her because I did the freeze out and then after the freeze out I gave her some like um she like she basically said like hey are you okay because I, I like totally started ignoring her and then like after that I started giving her positive reinforcement like oh you're, you're worried about me again and then right after that she basically got on top of me and then like it was like really easy escalation after that yeah, so it can work. I mean, I would say generally it's going to work really well with non-Asian girls. And it also works well when them being all resistant is just because they don't want to feel slutty rather than, than them actually not wanting to have sex. Mm -hmm. As a tactic, though, I don't think it's overall a great one or that necessary because... The result is that you deal with their objection, which is they're worried about you not liking them enough or that you just want to bang them and then never see them again or that you're going to think that they're a bad girl. So if that's like the variety of objections that you normally get, I mean, you can overcome them with freezing out, but it's kind of heavy-handed and it can make the girl feel... Uh, a bit messed up towards you because it sets the dynamic of well if you don't do what I want I'm gonna like punish you in this way whereas if you like negotiate with her and you, you talk with her quite openly and you reinforce her give her positive reinforcement then generally the girl's gonna feel more connected to you and it's gonna make things go down anyway but then you just don't have to deal with other dramas later yeah and actually I was under the impression that a freeze out was before you first close a girl. Yeah. So like if you're doing it after you've already closed her because she doesn't want to do something like give you a blowjob, then she'll think that you're only interested in her for sex. Pot that Potentially, yeah. Okay. The other thing is it's showing, it's like, damaging your value in her eyes a bit and it's showing that you have some level of like trauma or insecurities because if you think of it this way let's say uh you and i meet up and we're going to go and like eat dinner together right and i say i want to eat mexican food and you say well i want to eat italian food and then i freeze you out i just like stop i just pretend you don't exist i start talking on my phone that would be weird yeah, you'd be like, well, fuck this guy. I'm not meeting him again. I want to eat dinner with this motherfucker. <laughs> right? <laughs> Whereas if uh, you said you want Italian food, and I'm like, dude, you want Italian? I mean, come on. Why don't you want Mexican? You got to get those burritos. Think of that yogurt, man. Think of the yogurt. 
And then you're like, oh, well, I really want Italian food because they have spaghetti and they have all sort of stuff. And I'm like, oh, that does sound good. But here's what we'll do. How about this time we get some Mexican food and then next week we'll meet up and have Italian food because I'm, I'm dying for Mexican. I swear to God, I'm going to kill myself if I don't eat Mexican today. What do you reckon? I mean, in that regard, you're probably going to be like, all right, I guess we'll get Mexican because I'm being positive about it. But then I'm like putting a bit more pressure on you to make my decision and I'm giving you a compromise, which is, yeah, we'll like meet up next week and get Italian food. So then you still feel like you're getting your result. It's just not right now. Yeah. Excellent. Okay. Uh, any more questions? From you, John Thomas? Um, uh, well, yeah, actually... I had uh, one question originally before the, uh, the the whole freeze out um, topic came up, and um, I was wondering, in your experience, like, what's the biggest difference between Chinese girls and Korean girls? Um, that's a good question. Do you have a particular context? Um. Well, uh, not particularly, but I went on my first date with a Chinese girl tonight, mm -hmm. and it's just like something that I was thinking about the whole night. But yeah, that's just pretty much like just where the question's coming from. I would say overall, Korean girls have a lot higher self-esteem, and that they... Because of that, they have less in the way of trust issues and that they don't, and because they also have, I guess, a really strong cultural identity, they generally don't feel such a need to get like with a foreign guy or to like get with a particular guy so quickly. And you freaking girls. Yeah, yeah. I, I think that they have a lot higher self-esteem and they have a lot more pride in their culture and what that means than Chinese girls do. All right. I always heard that uh, Chinese girls are much more, well, I heard Chinese people are very nationalistic, so I was actually thinking that they'd be more so in the other direction. So that, that's a, actually a different thing. So I guess what I mean is this. Chinese girls... Uh, Chinese girls are, of course, they're proud of being Chinese, but they are also insecure about being Chinese. So that or they're insecure about themselves, and being a Chinese person by default is basically about being insecure. Because if you look at how they react anytime anyone says anything at all about China, they like freak the fuck out, right? And this is a common thing throughout all Chinese people. I've noticed. And it's mainly because they can't trust anybody else around them ever because Chinese people overall are pretty deceptive. And also because their country has gone through a lot of changes where someone betrays someone else and that's really just their history. It's just a thousands of years of people fucking everyone else over. Whereas with Korea, you've got a country that went from being like a bunch of poor farmers to being really successful and having the fastest internet in the world. So Korea's, Korea's changed a lot in the last, I guess, 50 years. And Korean people are very proud of being Korean. And it's, it's a bit different if you go and like game a bunch of Chinese girls. Their objections and their ways of doing things aren't so much because I'm from China. But Korean people, they are really proud of being Korean. And that's like a, a personal thing that they're also proud of. Whereas with Chinese people, they're not, I think, personally proud of being Chinese, but they are personally insecure about being Chinese. So, yeah, that's about the best answer I can give you on that. I would say in terms of dating and sex, Chinese girls are a lot easier than Koreans because... Korean people, they love Korea so much, they, they've also been like attacked by all the other countries nearby. 
a lot. So they feel the need to kind of keep the Korean bloodline pure. Whereas Chinese people, yeah, not so much. I mean, it's a big mixture of all these different types of people. There's like, I don't know, 50 or more different minorities in China. They don't look at things the same way. I mean, you look how many of them there are. Obviously, lots of people are fucking each other. And the fact that they know their country is still kind of messed up and it's still developing means that they are still somewhat insecure about it and also look up to or admire things about other parts of the world. Whereas I don't think that's particularly true with Koreans. And for example, you, you know K-pop, right? Yeah, obviously. Right, so K-pop's really popular like everywhere. What's popular about China? Uh, the wall. Okay, so nothing, basically. <laughs> in, terms of, in terms of cultural exports, no one cares about China. I mean, Kung Fu was probably a big thing a while back, but it didn't really do that well because no one, not that many people do it. But if you compare it to K-pop, I mean, Korean people know people really, really like Korea. So they don't need to copy everything from the West to make their country good because they've already developed to a certain point where they can go, okay, well, we're Korean and we're cool and we're like civilized and all this stuff is like good and we've actually made that ourselves from our country and our culture. Whereas with China, a lot of the time, they're just like copying stuff from others and they're still somewhat trying to regain their cultural identity because of the various changes the country's undergone in the last 50 years. Mm -hmm. So in terms of dating, this changes things a lot simply because I guess the insecurity thing. I mean, Chinese people... There's this thing called a, the foreigner effect. Have you heard of the foreigner effect before? Um, yeah, but I can't remember exactly what it means. So basically, you could say it's the girl's keenness level based on you because you're a foreigner, not because you as a person. Mm -hmm. So if you go and approach 100 Korean girls and you just say like, hi, you're really cute, whatever, right? And they don't know much about you. How keen will they be? One to 10 compared to if you approach 100 Chinese girls and say the same thing, and how keen will they be 1 to 10? Chinese girls in general are going to be a lot more keen simply because they like more stuff about foreign countries that's the new and interesting thing that in some ways is like better than their country or is an improvement in their country. So the foreigner effect is definitely stronger with Chinese girls than Korean girls. And just as an example, man, I mean, the last time I was in Korea, I was teaching two of the guys uh, from boot camp, alumni guys who were doing the Ultimate Man program. And I was talking to them about this. And what happens is if you walk around China just for a day, as a foreigner, the amount of looks, the amount of girls who get making eye contact with you and smiling is at least 50 times more than you would get in Korea. And I walk along Gangnam and even going to, say, Hongdae and Itaewon, I think I'll get, like, maybe, I don't know, 10 or 15 girls making eye contact with me in a day in Korea where they're showing some level of interest. Whereas in China, it would be three or four times that easy. It's, like, a really, really big difference. All right, so the border effect is much more in play with Chinese girls. Yeah, All right. Thanks. Yeah. I was uh, pretty curious about that. To just recap on that, I think that is more prevalent in Chinese girls because they have some deep-seated cultural insecurity just still being worked out based on them re like recalibrating themselves culturally and socially. Awesome. Yeah, yeah. That, that's great to know. I have no idea about Chinese girls. I've never, ever been to China. Really? Yeah, but I know you've been all over Asia, so... Yeah, I mean, you're living in Korea now, right? Yeah. Yeah, so if you come to China, you're probably not going to... You, you'll like some aspects of it, but you're probably going to be like, wow, it's just like a less developed, not as good version of Korea in some ways. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, maybe so. <laughs> yeah, it, it's different, and there's like some aspects of it I think are really good. China's kind of like the Wild West, and that's something I, I quite like that's different from, say, Korea or Japan. Yeah. Nice. Uh, that is definitely it for tonight. Thanks for coming to the call, and we'll do the same thing next week. 
uh, I will edit this call and then like upload it somewhere so if you don't want to be included for some reason in that I can like edit you out just like let me know other than that I will be finishing off an article tomorrow which I will like send everybody so be aware of that and check it out it's on the pickup Asia blog and yeah it'll be the same time next week so feel free to come along thank you yeah. Right. Have a good one, guys. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.